So Anthropic just announced Claude for Education. Now, if you don't know what Anthropic is or Claude, they are a competitor to OpenAI, and honestly, I think they're the best AI out there right now. For now, that could change like in the next five minutes. Now, what does it mean to have Claude for Education? Because like right now, anyone can access Claude from Anthropic. They have a free tier, they have a pro tier, and you can just use it right now. So what's different about the learning mode? Which is what they call it. <laughs> they call it their learning mode, one of the key features. And this is something I stinking love. Instead of just providing answers, they're gonna guide students and help students develop critical thinking skills, which that's really what we have to learn now in the age of AI. Now, Claude's not the first company to do this. And also, I think there's a better way to do this on your own with your own stuff. I'll show you here in a moment. I've done that with my kids. But this, I think, is a very neat and interesting step forward. And if we deep dive into the learning mode just for a moment, the big thing they're highlighting is their Socratic questioning, which instead of giving answers, it'll ask the student, why? A bunch of big why questions to deepen their understanding. What evidence do you have that supports your conclusion? Things like that. They're also doing full campus access agreements, which will provide Claude to all the students attending these universities. Right now, they've already been working with Northeastern University, London School of Economics, and Political Science. I didn't know that was not done yet. And then Chaplin College. Champlin College, how do you say that? Now, from what I can tell, if you want to access Claude's learning mode in education, that's probably the only way right now. An organization like a university buying that plan and providing it to its students. At least I couldn't find a way to access it for myself right now. They do have, I think this is gonna be like individual opportunities for students. So you could become an ambassador for your campus. Or if you wanna build something cool, they'll provide API credits if you're approved after you apply. That's a weird way to say vibe coding, huh? <laughs> They're also building partnerships with companies like Internet2 and Instructure, which in Structure they have this platform called Canvas, or a software called Canvas, which is an LMS that a lot of these universities will use to provide their instruction. They're gonna bake Claude into these things, integrating AI into their teaching and learning. Now, this is not the first time we've seen AI try to jump into higher education. We saw OpenAI do this with Oxford and also California State University. But as far as I can tell, Claude is kind of the first ones doing this Socratic method where they're trying to put some guardrails around AI. And that begs the question. I wanna hear your thoughts on this too, so comment below. What do you think about AI in education? Do you think AI is gonna make students smarter or dumber? Or does it depend on the student? And frankly, I don't think it matters what we think. AI is going to be used by students no matter what. They're using it right now. I recently became a big fan of this guy named Ethan Mollick, a professor at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. And I love how he says this. He's trying to understand what our new AI haunted era means for work and education. And he said this, the question is now not whether AI will change education, but how we will shape that change to create a more effective, equitable, and engaging learning environment for all. This is part of a paper he wrote called Post-Apocalyptic Education, which sounds fun, right? <laughs> a survey found that 82% of undergraduates and 72% of K-12 students had used AI for school. That number's probably much, much higher. I don't know a student that isn't using AI for their school. And 45% are using it for completing other types of schoolwork, like, like writing assignments. And they don't see it as cheating most of the time. They're just getting some help, some answers for some tricky problems, the same way they might use Google to help them find something. And the students think they're learning by using AI to help with their homework, but it's kind of an illusion. Ethan Mollett calls it illusory knowledge. They don't realize that this is actually undermining their learning. They're getting advice and answers and it makes them feel like they know what they're talking about. There was a study done at a high school in Turkey where some students were giving GPT-4 to help with homework. And while their homework scores rose, shot up, they actually learned less, scoring 17% worse on their final exam. And the students aren't the only one with this illusion. Teachers think they can detect most AI content from their students, but that's detection illusion. AI has become so good, it can write more human than humans can. There are no specialized AI detectors that can 100% detect it. Sure, the older AI, easy to tell. But with a few good prompts, you can make an AI sound just like you. And you can't just ask AI to detect AI. Even AI can't tell. So instead of teachers fighting AI, and just leaving it to the students because that's what's happening right now. If you're like, oh, we're not doing AI at all, the students are gonna find a way to use AI, but we need to make sure the AI students are using is encouraging thinking, not replacing thinking, which is what Claude is trying to do. So I'm a massive fan, but this is not the only way to do this. And for me, like I homeschool my kids, I'm not gonna be able to get a hold of Claude for learning. I'm not a big massive organization, so how can I give my kids AI 
without ruining their thinking and making them super stupid? The answer is kind of simple. It's just gonna be a fancy prompt. I'm actually using a prompt that Ethan Mollett came up with for my kids. Let me show you real quick. I'll put a link below for this. It's this one here, uh, a tutoring prompt. And if you don't know what a prompt is for an AI, it basically tells it, here's who you are, here's what you're going to do, here's what you're not going to do. And I love this one because it will have the goal of improving understanding and to challenge students to construct their own knowledge via open-ended questions, hence tailored explanations and examples. Sounds like Socratic questioning. And it'll start with gathering information, asking the student questions about what they already know, what level they're at. So all I do is take this prompt, every bit of this, and put it into my own version of ChatGPT that I give to my kids. Now, what are you talking about, Chuck? How do you give your kids ChatGPT? Well, I made a video about it here where I, you can host your own thing called Open Web UI. It looks like this. I'll show you the very things my kids use. I go to ai.hogwarts.studio. Here it is. Notice it does feel and look a lot like ChatGPT or Claude. And I can use ChatGPT or Claude through this. But if I go into my settings here, go to admin panel, settings, and models, I can tell the model what to do. Like right here, I have Claude 3.7, the latest Claude model. I call it AI Tutor 2.0. And right here under the system prompt, I told it who it is. Let's try it out. And by the way, I only give my kids access to these tutor models and nothing else. I think I spelled that right, I have no idea. I did. But as you can see, it'll start to guide me through understanding it. It'll make sure the student understands it as it's talking to the student. It's incredible. And by the way, if you want to host something like this, you can do it easily. I have a video right here, and it's very easy thanks to this video sponsor, Hostinger. Click on the link below or head out to hostinger.com forward slash VPS For just $6.99 a month, you can spin up your very own home lab server in the cloud and start hosting AI yourself. Now, I love Hostinger because they give you a ton of resources. So much so that if you want to do open web UI, that's awesome, do that. You can also do more things, like host your own Google with Cirque's NG, I forgot what it's called for a second. Run some Docker containers, learn some tech stuff, run a website, you can do so many things on this VPS. And if you use code NETWORKCHUCK10, you'll get an additional 10% off. So just check it out. And thanks to hosting here for sponsoring this video. Now, what are your thoughts? AI in education. Are you a fan? Are you not? I know for me, I use AI to help me learn all the time. And you may too, but you have to guard yourself from that illusory knowledge. I think I'm saying that right. I feel like I'm saying illusory, <laughs> illusory knowledge to where you feel like you're learning, but you may not be. But I think if we can all learn to use AI to deepen our thinking and reasoning, like our own personal super smart tutor or teacher right there next to us, that's how we're going to learn and grow faster. And here's the thing, you may be against AI, fine. I think though, yourself and your kids are going to be at a disadvantage. I believe if you augment yourself properly with AI, you will move further faster. But I get it, you gotta be cautious. We're in a weird day and age. That's all I got. I'll catch you next time.